face off over the caste census has escalated. A day after Anurag Thakur and Rahul Gandhi cross swords over the caste survey in parliament, political fireworks are still exploding. The BJP has doubled down on its attack on Rahul Gandhi, asking if Rahul can ask everyone's caste. Others have the right to ask about his caste as well. The Congress and the India Alliance have called the caste taunt at Rahul Gandhi a breach of privilege. Manne Sabapati ji, jis ki jat ka pata nahi, wo ganna ki baat karta hai. Main unhone jo baat kahi hai, aap jo virod kar rahe hain, main usko main usko dikhwa lu. Sir, sir, Anur Anurag Thakur ji ne mujhe gali mujh par gali di hai. Nee koi baat. Mujhe a fiery caste face-off in Parliament. Manne Sabapati ji, jis ki jat ka pata nahi, wo ganna ki baat karta hai. सभापति महोदय इनसे ये पूछना चाहता हूं आपने जाति कैसे पूछ ली है बताइए बस आप जाति कैसे पूछ सकते हैं आप बताएं जाति कैसे पूछ सकते हैं आप पूछ के दिखाओ जाति को आप जाति कैसे पूछोगे तो बिकॉज सर जो भी इस देश में दलितों की आदिवासियों की पिछड़ों की बात उठाता है जो भी उनके लिए लड़ता है उसको गाली खाना ही पड़ता है जाति जनगणना हम करा के दिखाएंगे खत्म आपको जितनी गाली देनी है आप दीजिए हम खुशी से लेंगे धन्यवाद मैंने नाम किसी का नहीं लिया था राहुल गांधी वर्सेस अनुराग ठाकुर क्लैश ऑन कास्ट इज रेजिंग आउटसाइड द पार्लियामेंट टू राहुल गांधी और पूरा कांग्रेस पार्टी सुबह शाम रात जाति 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 करते रहते हैं मैं ये कहना चाहता हूं कि इंडी गठबंधन में भयंकर कंफ्यूजन नजर आ रहा है इस मुद्दे पे अखिलेश यादव जी बहुत आक्रोश में पूछते हैं आप किसी की जात कैसे पूछ सकते हैं फिर कहते हैं पूरे देश की जात पूछनी है तो पहले मेरे भाई स्पष्ट कर दो पूछनी है कि नहीं पूछनी है माननीय अनुराग ठाकुर जी ने जब अपने विषय को रखा किसी का नाम नहीं लिया तो केवल एक ही व्यक्ति को बुरा लगा और उसके इशारे पे कांग्रेस के सारे सदस्य खड़े हो गए क्यों कुछ दिनों पहले पत्रकारों की जाति पूछने का काम राहुल गांधी कर रहे थे पूछ रहे थे आपका नाम क्या है आपका नाम क्या है बताइए आप किस जाति के आप जाति जनगणना चाहते हैं और आप कह रहे हैं कि सदन के अंदर जाति पूछी नहीं जा सकती है द इंडिया अलायंस इज अप इन आर्म्स अगेंस्ट अनुराग ठाकुर कास्ट रिमार्क Congress meanwhile has moved a privilege motion against the prime minister for allegedly amplifying Anurag Thakur's remarks. Ek house mein taunt marna ye karna ye sakt parliament mein aisa nahi hota. Parliament mein to kisi ki jati puchi nahi jati aur wo kaun se jaat ke hain wo malum hai unko. Aur ये पर्पजली किसी को इंसल्ट करने के लिए उसने कहा है ये अच्छा नहीं है मैं जब मंदिर के दर्शन करने गया तो कुछ ऐसी ताकतें हैं समाज में वो नहीं चाहते थे कि मैं हवन पूजन करूं वो दिन मैं भूल नहीं सकता हूं जिस दिन मुख्यमंत्री आवास को गंगा जल से धोया गया था सोचिए आप कल्पना कर सकते हो जब आप आ, चंद्रमा में जाना चाहते हैं इलेक्ट्रॉन्स की बात कर रहे हो डिजिटल इंडिया की बात हो रही हो क्या बीजेपी कांग्रेस पार्टी के नेता या किसी भी व्यक्ति की जात पूछ सकती है जातिगत जनगणना एक ऐसा मुद्दा है कहते हैं ना कि कोई आइडिया जब अराइव करता है तो आप उसको कुछ नहीं कर सकते रोक नहीं सकते जातिगत जनगणना हकीकत है और भला होगा प्रधानमंत्री जी का और निर्मला जी का कि आप लोग करवाइए ताकि आपकी बजट हवा हवाई ना हो आपकी नीतियां हवा हवाई ना हो कास्ट इज बिकम द लेटेस्ट फ्लैश पॉइंट इन इंडियन पॉलिटिक्स ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टुडे The caste survey in India has always been a massively complicated issue. Former prime ministers from Jawaharlal Nehru to Indira Gandhi to Rajiv Gandhi have been opposed to caste-based quotas. 
uh, Rahul Gandhi himself in the past had declared that he didn't believe in the caste system. Then what has brought about this change in stance? Is this a belated realization for social affirmation or is this just a tool to take on BJP's commander? Rahul Gandhi has been making a case for caste census in India. But the history of caste survey has been a complicated one in India. Every census in independent India from 1951 to 2011 had published data on scheduled caste and scheduled tribes, but not on other castes. Before that, every census until 1931 had data on caste. However, in 1941, caste-based data was collected but not published. In 2011, socio-economic and caste-based data was collected but never released. Fifteen years ago, Rahul Gandhi himself had a different stand on caste politics. I personally don't believe in the caste system. I don't see myself as staying with Dalits. This is a uh, I see myself as going to a human being's house. I don't see it as a Dalit or a upper caste or a lower caste. As far as I'm concerned, there is a poor human being and I'm going to his house. In fact, Jawaharlal Nehru too had expressed reservations about caste-based quotas and privileges. In a letter dated June 27, 1961, Nehru wrote, This necessitates our getting out of the old habit of reservations and particular privileges being given to this caste or that group. He stated, I do not like reservation in any form, especially reservation in jobs. I am against any such step that promotes inefficiency and takes us towards mediocrity. Over six decades later, Rahul reignited the caste census debate in the run-up to the 2024 general elections. Tomorrow political decision nahi hai ye nyay ka decision hai ye hissedari ka decision hai isme koi political calculation nahi hai caste census hoga aur hindustan ke garibon ki jo hissedari banti hai wo unko milegi aur wo kaam congress karke dikhayegi as polls drew closer rahul demanded that a journalist reveal his caste aap shiv prasad ji hai आपके मालिक का क्या नाम है आपके मालिक का क्या नाम है क्या नाम है नाम बताओ नाम बताओ मारो मत उसको मारना नहीं है मारना नहीं है नाम बताओ उसका वो ओबीसी है नहीं वो दलित है नहीं वो आदिवासी है नहीं द बीजेपी सेज दैट इट इज नॉट अगेंस्ट कास्ट सेंसेस Though the government of India has decided to not list caste-wise population other than SCs and STs in census. The caste census could potentially challenge the current 50% cap on overall reservations. And so it has provided the opposition an opportunity to garner support from the OBC groups and challenge BJP's Hindutva politics. Bureau report. India Today. Rahul Gandhi didn't start out as a proponent of the caste census. I want to play two of his comments back to back for you to get a sense of his political evolution. And then I'll ask the question, is this a genuine realization that he's become an advocate for social affirmation or is this just political opportunism? First, just listen to these two comments from Rahul Gandhi and then we'll start a debate. The press sees me as staying with Dalits. I don't see myself as staying with Dalits. This is a, uh, I see myself as going to a human being's house. I don't see it as a Dalit or a upper caste or lower caste. As far as I'm concerned, there is a poor human being and I'm going to his house. And by the way, I go to poor people's houses, whether they're Dalits, upper caste, uh, minority, anybody. And I spend uh, nights in people's houses who are non-Dalits. So this differentiation occurs in uh, the media. It doesn't occur in my mind. I am not, I personally don't believe in the caste system. I believe that whether you're a Dalit or a upper caste, you're the same. The only difference as far as I can see between a poor person and a rich person is opportunity. 
सो दिस फ्रेम ऑफ दलित इज योर फ्रेम इट्स नॉट माई फ्रेम आप शिव प्रसाद जी हैं आपके मालिक का क्या नाम है आपके मालिक का क्या नाम है क्या नाम है नाम बताओ नाम बताओ ओ मारो मत यार मारो मत उसको मारना नहीं है मारना नहीं है वो ओबीसी है नहीं वो दलित है नहीं वो आदिवासी है नहीं अरब पति है वो Rahul Gandhi did not start his politics as a proponent of the caste system as you heard in those comments he actually quite opposed it for several years then he's had a change of heart now is this a genuine change of heart and mind uh, or is this just rank political opportunism he's pandit pandit nehru our first prime minister opposed this his grandmother indira gandhi opposed this rajiv gandhi opposed uh, mandal and now rahul gandhi is seeking to become a big votary of the caste census joining us on this broadcast i want to welcome first uh, yogendra yadav co-founder of the swaraj india campaign in different capacities he's been working uh, behind the scenes to try and uh, give some political shape to the opposition uh, we've got uh, rahul verma fellow at the center for policy research uh, we've got sanjay jha and representing the bjp i have guru prakash paswan i want to spend some time with yogendra yadav first yogendra ji i have multiple comments uh, of rahul gandhi's from different years in the past in uh, 2009 on the 7th of october the all india congress committee general secretary rahul gandhi declared he didn't believe in the caste system at all and felt that the only difference between the rich and the poor is one of opportunity in an interview in september 2016 when he was asked do you endorse the brahmin narrative of the up campaign he says i don't believe in caste no endorse any of that up needs to get out of this morass the only way to do this is to become a party that represents equally my view is that the congress is a party for all he says i don't believe in the caste system dalit is your frame you know from there he cuts to aapki jaat kya hai aapke malik ki jaat kya hai journalist ki jaat kya hai now is this just political opportunism or has rahul gandhi become a genuine votary of a caste census how do you see this change from the time he starts out where he's opposed to the idea of caste is dalit is not my frame uh, i don't believe in the caste system it's only about opportunity which is in some ways what prime minister modi is saying as well to now demanding that there be a caste census yogendra yadav uh, rahul i'm here to discuss policy not persons Uh, when your people approached me this morning, they said we are debating caste census. So I'll focus on caste census. Uh, incidentally, now that you have given the entire history of what Rahul Gandhi said, I'm sure you would have also given the history of what BJP has said. Uh, you would, I'm sure, have said that Mr. Rajnath Singh in 2018 had actually promised on the floor of the house to enumerate the OBCs. That in 2010, the entire parliament, including the BJP, had passed a consensus. position and bjp had given a written letter to mr manmohan singh to support caste census i'm sure you would have played all that but i'm not here to discuss any one person's changing stance i'm simply reminding you there is absolutely no contradiction between not believing in caste and wanting to have caste census that incidentally is my own position as well my wife and i have not given our children caste names because we don't believe in it and because i do not believe in caste because i want to eliminate caste because i believe in annihilation of caste therefore as a modern sensible person i believe in caste census i find it absolutely astonishing rahul that uh, we debate in this age and time we debate something as elementary as caste census remember caste census is nothing big it's only adding one column hear me carefully it's only adding one column to the questionnaire of caste uh, of census which will be carried all over the country zero cost zero additional effort involved in that i'm surprised that we debate it in a situation where caste actually this small exercise of adding a small column 
would give us not merely the number of castes and communities, which is a very small information. It will give us social, economic, and educational profile of each social group in this country at each level, national, state, district, and even village. Incidentally, this is exactly the kind of evidence that the courts, the judiciary has been demanding all these years. Courts have been saying, do not take any affirmative action policy without producing evidence. And I'm absolutely astonished that people oppose collection of evidence. This is like saying, well, let's not have an x-ray. How can you debate it if you have had a fall, if there is a problem? You want to have an x-ray. You can later on debate whether it needs a plaster or it needs a surgery. How can you debate an x-ray? Which is what's happening in our country. People like us, and, and I want to appeal to every one of your viewers who may be opposed to caste reservation. I would invite them. In fact, if you are honest about your opposition, you should be demanding a caste census because people who say, look, caste has disappeared. Ab caste ka wo mamla nahi raha. Well, let's get a census. We'll get to know it. Those who say, some communities have captured SC, ST, OBC reservation. They should not be allowed reservation benefits. Well, then let's have cross census. We'll get that information whether some people have captured or not. There are those who say that some communities should be eliminated, thrown out of the list of SC, ST, OBC because they are already so privileged. Well, then let's have cross census because we'll get to know it. I'm absolutely astonished that instead of arguing about what exactly is the nature of discrimination or disadvantage, whether it has improved, reduced, what kind of a relationship it has with everything else. Instead of doing that, we all oppose the very collection of evidence. And that makes me suspect. If someone says, Rahul, you may have had fall yesterday, but yaar, actually mat karwa lena. You would say, ek bar no, but if it's all that simple, Yogendra, Yogendra Ji, if it's so simple, whether he's your friend or an enemy, the parties which are currently in opposition, why don't they begin by taking the lead? For example, in Karnataka, in 2014, in Siddharamaya's first term as CM, a caste census was commissioned. The report was submitted by the Karnataka State Commission for Backward Caste. It hasn't been accepted by the Congress government because there is a fear that the Lingayats and the Vokaligas uh, will be at odds with each other if their numbers are made public. You know, surely a leader like Rahul Gandhi, and you're talking about the philosophy, then surely the opposition should take the first step and say, okay, here's a caste census that's already been done. Let's make it in the, let's put it in the public domain and let the impact unfold. We will show the way. Isn't that hypocritical that you say what you do in parliament, but where you have a caste census, you don't accept it and make it public and then act on it? Uh, Rahul, I'm sure there would be people on the panel who are capable of defending the Congress party and Rahul Gandhi. That's not my brief here. And I have said, I'm slightly surprised that you see only one side of the hypocrisy and you've not quite managed to see the other side of hypocrisy. In any case, that's not my business to correct the biases of your show. I would only say, as someone who believes that caste census is an elementary step towards addressing caste inequalities, in whichever nuanced form they exist or if they have disappeared, I would say yes, Karnataka government should make it public. I would say yes, all other governments should make it public. I would say yes, it should happen at the national level. Where is the inconsistency in what I am saying? But you would have read what your friend, uh, you know, some, somebody who is also an academic, Pratap Bhanu Mehta wrote, uh, where he is questioning how you know invoking caste becomes a substitute for serious thinking and will not serve the cause of social justice or healthy institutions you know people can argue that this is just an attempt political opportunism to try and split bjp's commandal which is why there is this supposed change of heart because if this is genuine uh, it would have been the case all the while now because you see the bjp attempting to try and unite all hindu communities along the idea of mandir along the idea of mandal the way to split them is to invoke everyone's caste identity yogendra yadav i read pratap mehta very carefully in fact uh, you would have noticed a slight change in his tone in the yesterday's paper in the article that's been published this morning Incidentally, Rahul, since we are discussing caste census, there is not one word in that article against caste census. So I'll keep focusing on the real issue. I'll not get sidetracked. Pratap Mehta's problem is the way in which Rahul Gandhi articulated it with the example of, with the example of Halwa. 
I incidentally think it was a brilliant uh, uh, invocation by Rahul Gandhi, but that apart, that's not what we are debating. Show me one line in that article about caste census. I may have a difference with him, but he's a nuanced thinker. He actually begins by pointing out, I really want people like you to read the first three paragraphs of that article. I'm sure you would have read that carefully. The real question is not hypocrisy, Rahul. You know, an opportunism, everything that happens in the political world is because some political players see an opportunity for them to advance their political base. This is true of Labharthi. This is true of giving, giving ration to people. This is true of uh, vaccination. This is true of everything in the world. So welcome to the world of politics. Uh, I, I'm not saying any one person is opportunist, but if you were to say that any party which seeks political opportunities in what it does, then you would have opposed Nitish Kumar giving cycles to girls, something that I really celebrated. You would have opposed, I'm sure you would have opposed Rahul, you would have opposed Mr. Uh, Narendra Modi offering 10 kgs of ration free. I'm sure I forgot to watch your show, but I'm sure as a consistent human being, you would have opposed it. You would have said this is opportunism. He's trying to get votes. Which world do we live in, Rahul? No, but you haven't answered my question. Isn't, isn't this the reality that this is a political attempt by the opposition to try and split BJP's mandal politics, that you make people more aware of their caste identity and uh, therefore shift the focus away from Mandal. You know, I, since you quoted Pratap Bhandu I will tell you what he says. The dismantling of caste will not take place by its cynical uses. The cheap use of identity is often a symptom of intellectual bankrupts and even lack of honesty. But let's leave that aside uh, and focus on the political opportunism because then ultimately it comes to whether it's a question of principle or political opportunism. Uh, for your benefit, let me repeat it, Rahul. I thought I had answered it, but let me simplify it further. I'm saying that the fact that something works to the advantage of a political party does not make that measure irrelevant or illogical or bad policy. There are many bad, good policies. In fact, most good policies in the world are pursued because the political party in question tends to benefit from it. If someone works for schools, if someone works for greater education, better quality of education and hopes to get votes, I would say thank you very much. Please go ahead. Why don't you get more votes? So to say in democratic politics, to say that someone is seeking greater support and opportunity is just stating something elementary. What is so special here, Rahul? And if we were to start discarding policies on the basis of someone wanting to seek votes, then we would have to discard all the policies. We would have to discard all the policies for farmers, for women, for Dalit, for child, for education, for health. And that's why I said, which world do you live in? Okay, let me, let me try and draw you to the principle. Because the, take for example the state of Karnataka. What's the concern the Lingayats and the Vokaligas have? That their actual numbers will be known. And if they are known, uh, there's a fear that the numbers could be lesser than what is perceived. As a result of which their political uh, heft could potentially come down. Now that would lead to some kind of a pushback in society. These two communities could be at loggerhead, these two communities together versus the other communities could be at loggerhead. So the argument that's being made is uh, that this will unnecessarily create imbalance and rift and stress in society, that this is a can of worms that's best left unopened. I'm so happy you picked that example and I'm so happy that you actually know the reason why the caste census opening is being opposed. Because those who are dominant are scared. They are scared because their real numbers would be known. That possibly the fact of their privileges may also get known. This is precisely my point Rahul. I'm so happy that you've come to the real thing now. That in this country those who are probably not 20% of the population, upper caste Hindus, to my mind, are less about 18 to 19% of this country's population. I could be slightly wrong. But those who occupy 80% positions of everything that we see wherever formal reservations are not in place, and even when formal reservations are in place, those who occupy 60, 70% positions, they are scared. People oppose caste census because they know what the result would be, exactly like Lingayats and Okaligas. They know the result. 
and they are scared of the result because they have been, someone has been saying, my size is this much. And then suddenly comes the information and you realize I'm much smaller. What looks like a can of worms to those who are in opportunity, and that's the point, Rahul, what looks like a pothole to someone could be an opportunity for someone else. So what appears to be, and that my real problem is that those who are privileged in this country have enjoyed caste-based privileges for 100 years and today are innocent and say, mujhe meri caste ka pata nahi, mujhe to college mein jaake pata laga. Their privileges will be unmasked and no one wants their privileges to be unmasked. No, so let's take this one step further into the future. Look like let's assume that the Karnataka government the best possible or, thing that can happen in or democracy. any government makes the caste census public. Now you have to deal with the altered reality. Some communities have greater numbers than was imagined, some have lesser. There's already a court cap on how much uh, reservation can be given. Uh, that's already under dispute whether you can go above that cap or not. Now try and implement it in society. Now try and take privileges which are available. So basically when you're in opposition you can say all these things. The moment someone comes into government and has to deal then with the responsibility of implementing these measures, which is why even an opposition rule state like Karnataka hasn't been able to implement it. So it's easy as an academic philosophically for you to say what you were or what you are. If you were in government to try and then implement it would create the frictions uh, which uh, is the concern. Uh, have you heard of a state called Bihar? Mm -hmm. uh, they actually have already carried out this census. They have actually made the report public. Now the separate question is, and I'm repeatedly asking you Rahul, not to mix the test with the, with the medicine. You can, at, at the moment we are debating whether there should be a biopsy or not. We are not debating whether chemotherapy is a good answer or a surgery is a good response. That's, keep the debate apart. We just are debating whether there should be a biopsy, whether there should be a blood test, whether there should be a PET scan. That is what we are debating. And strangely enough, before you debate whether, I mean, you know, suppose we have somebody who has unfortunately an illness in the family and five family members are sitting and saying, should we go to Bombay and get a PET scan done? And someone says, if there is a PET scan, we may have to go for chemotherapy and chemotherapy is very bad. Therefore, let's not get, get a PET scan done. What would you say? Yaar, kya baat hai? Theek to ho. Tabet to theek hai. Kis tarin ki argument de rahe ho? That is what amazes me in this country, that we are debating medicine before the test. Let the test come out, maybe the test would reveal. Why don't people feel confident enough that the caste census would reveal that caste in this country has disappeared? Okay. Maybe caste census would reveal that every caste and community has the same proportion of poor as any other community, in which case reservations will become redundant. Okay. Why are we not open to so it? Or is it that we know the answer and we are scared of the answers? Okay, I'll leave it there for the time being. Yogendra Yadav giving a philosophical overview of why he's a votary of the caste census. He didn't get into the politics of it, but I hope now to get into that with Guru Prakash Paswan, Sanjay Jha and Rahul Varma. Thank you, Yogendra Ji, for joining us. Guru Prakash Paswan, does the BJP concede that unlike during the assembly elections when the idea of Rahul Gandhi pushing for a caste census didn't really fly, now during the Lok Sabha elections and post, it seems to have generated more traction. There is now visibly a section in society that says, okay, let's push for this, especially the downtrodden, those who are dispossessed, the backwards, they demand this and this is now in becoming a political hot potato for the BJP. You know the pitfalls, you don't really want to do it, but you can't come out publicly and oppose it either. No, Rahul, I think in your initial set of research, you have indicated what the truth of the matter is. And I was patiently listening to Mr. Yogendra Yadav as well. And you have also articulated it very nicely that the question is of opportunism. So precisely, caste or any social injustice, social inequality for the Congress party, it's a question of opportunism. But for the Bharti Jinta party, it's a question of opportunities. It is essentially opportunism on one side and opportunities on the other side. Mr. Rahul Gandhi keeps talking about uh, Dalit Adivasi. Mr. Rahul Gandhi's party, Congress party, is in government in Himachal Pradesh, uh, in Telangana, in Karnataka. How many Dalit Adivasi CMs are there? I want to ask him tonight. As far as the Bharti Janta Party is concerned, opportunities. Chhattisgarh Chief Minister Vishnu Dev Sai 
comes from Adivasi community. Odisha Chief Minister Mohan Maji comes from Adivasi community. Deputy Chief Minister from Madhya Pradesh Jagdish Devda comes from Dalit community. Prem Prakash Bairwa, Deputy Chief Minister from Rajasthan comes from Dalit community. This is a question. And Rahul, let me also make this very clear. Mr. Yogendra Yadav was making very lofty statements about representation, about social justice, about opportunities, about share in power, about bhagedari. And he was also talking about the feudal elites. For the first time in the history of our country, Rahul, for the first time in the history of our country, we have an Adivasi ki beti at the highest constitutional position in the country. The same feudal elite, the same Congress elite, they are scared of the fact that we have become the fifth largest economy in the world under the leadership of a prime minister who comes from an ati pichudi jati. I want to ask, and especially in your initial observation, you made it very clear. 1961, Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru, while writing to the chief minister, he said, I oppose reservation of any kind because it encourages mediocrity, because it uh, produces second class officers, it promotes inefficiency. Cut to 1990, Mr. Rajiv Gandhi, father of Mr. Rahul Gandhi, on the floor of the house, he opposed the recommendations of Mandal Commission. He said that you have brought the country on the edge of caste wars. 1998, Mr. Sitaram Kesri, I come from Bihar. Sitaram Kesri, a OBC president of the Congress party, was incited in the Congress party. Unki dhoti khich li gai thi. On the contrary, circa 2014, we have the NCBC getting the constitutional status, highest share of representation in the Council of okay. Ministers, highest share of representation within the party, highest share of representation for the member of parliament. Just last 10 seconds, Rahul. For the first time, Rahul, and this is a very important data, a very important parliament standing committee on home affairs. For the first time, we have a Dalit, Brijlalji, chairing that committee. Okay. For the first time okay. since 1954, so, the BJP is framing this as Rahul's from the presidential opportunism of versus Modi's opportunities. Now, his great-grandfather opposed it, his grandmother opposed it, the father opposed it. Rahul Gandhi himself, when we played plenty of those reactions from the past, was very opposed to the idea of, uh, you know, even asking somebody if he's a Dalit or if he's an OBC. He was opposed to the whole idea. Now he's pivoted to being a votary of the caste census. You know, how genuine is it? How does anyone know it's genuine? Because could this really just be down to opportunism? That he realizes that you can't really beat BJP's mandal you know, this whole idea that you can unify Hindu communities as one large political umbrella. The way to splinter that umbrella is to break Hindus along caste lines. Is that really what's at play here? Uh, well, Rahul, good evening. You know, it is astonishing that we are discussing a very serious and a grave subject of caste uh, census or caste discrimination. And there has not been a single utterance. I did not expect that from the BJP for sure of the Indian Constitution. Here is the truth, that if anybody's read the Indian Constitution, they will be aware that as far as the empowerment of the discriminated against or the disempowered, uh, this is the one instance actually where the Constitution empowers the state to become more interventionist. In fact, the Constitution encourages the state to do what we no, but Sanjay, you reverse. aren't answering my question. You're giving a philosophical a answer question. to a straight question. I'm saying, for a very long time, Rahul Gandhi himself opposed everything to do with caste. Now he's become a votary of the caste census. How do we know this is genuine and this isn't just political opportunism? You know, Rahul, if you hadn't interrupted me, I was almost coming to that okay. point. Okay. But you need to get the context right. Let's not do a transactional debate here. My issue is that the Constitution empowers the state to do reverse discrimination or what you call as positive discrimination and affirmative action. Why? Because the founders of the Constitution saw that there was going to be backwardness in India, inequality and poverty, which is exactly the reality. Now, this has gone beyond what Rahul Gandhi said and Narendra Modi said. I think let's be a little adult here in this conversation. The backwardness of the Indian economy, the inequality that has got aggravated over the last 10 years, and the fact that there is rampant joblessness in India, is actually going to make all political parties now work on reservations. And the answer is straightforward. There are no jobs happening. The government is looked up to by largely the majority of the people who are scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, and the OBCs of India for a job or an, or an educational opportunity. Now, here is the BJP person on your panel 
who said i'm from bihar i have got bad news for him even i'm from bihar did you notice something interesting he never mentioned his own ally nitish kumar's caste census report or the caste survey report what are the findings rahul very interesting only 1% of the people of bihar are post graduates only 7% are graduates now the very disturbing data only 0.44% have a four wheeler or a car and only 3% or 3.5% rahul have ji. a two wheeler let me tell you if you go granular into the data rahul you'll be stunned to know that the majority of the people who have none of it are people who are scheduled tribe scheduled caste and the obcs and the ebcs here is the point in the caste census debate that i think yogendra yadav was talking about that you have a situation rahul today where the entire conversation or the rhetoric of mr modi's government is about 5 trillion economy which this man quoted and they talk about india being uh, you know a third largest no, economy no but if it's also sector. simple no one talks why about doesn't the congress government Nobody in karnataka sanjay ja take the lead and make the caste census that's already been done public act on it absolutely and here is where i'm going to agree with you rahul the congress has to bite the bullet rahul gandhi has done that in parliament and you need to address this because i feel and i'm a brahman by the way and i will share with you an example i'm a brahman i'm from bihar my father used to be a, a person under whom people did a phd and I, when i was just 12 years old i have written the story in my book when i was just 12 years old one of the persons who did a phd under him came to my house when my dad was not there he happened to be from a backward caste i discovered it later he came and he touched my feet when i was 12 years old and i said why are you doing that this is embarrassing if at all you should look up to my dad and he said no i'm doing that because i belong to a backward caste no, no, and you are a brahmin but, but, okay. that is the state of discrimination in india no, we no, should be ashamed sir, of ourselves no no it's a very simple question if it's also that. simple begin by implementing where you can rest Absolutely, of it is all philosophy everybody wants to give us the 360 degree uh, helicopter shot view are boss jahan aap kar sakte ho to kar do na rahul verma you've been smiling at different parts of this conversation now uh, i want you to get to brass tacks so everybody is giving me a philosophical underpinning and that's fine i can have an academic debate do you think this is really being done to try and break the bjp's mandal vote bank that rahul gandhi the opposition realizes the only way out of the chakravi of mandal politics is to go the kamandal route uh that's right see india's both national parties beat congress or beat bjp had a very uncomfortable relationship with the question of caste and social justice congress took a long time realizing this caste question perhaps in 2006 uh when arjun singh basically uh, got what you know as mandal 2 and then congress now has started talking about uh, caste and social justice same is the case with bjp uh, bjp you know like on one side will talk about caste representation uh, and uh, uh, between 2014 and 2024 you saw every time there was a ministerial expansion happening uh, or anything they would also tell you how many dalits or how many scheduled castes they got into it but i don't think any both of these parties have had a serious intellectual thinking on how to deal with the question of caste and social justice and that's the uh, real problem and that's why they will be skirting the issue not dealing head on uh, you have like you know you pointed out congress party conducting caste census in karnataka and not implementing it you have also seen with bjp uh, you know you had rohini commission recommendations Uh, which has been submitted to government after many delays and the government has yet not tabled that report okay so no, so let me ask you this question rahul orma imagine you're a cutthroat practitioner not an academic and now the caste census is implemented in the way that rahul gandhi is saying main to karunga kisi na din karunga if it impl- gets implemented i want you in 120 seconds to describe to our viewers what you think the consequences could be uh, i don't know uh, and and it's hard to figure out it it see you need first you need census to be then forget about caste uh, census you need census to be done which has not happened and i think yogin uh, ji was absolutely right you need to add the column on caste in caste census because you need to be able to have evidence if you, if, if in this uh, country we run lots of policies where caste based sort of allocations are made you need to have that evidence to basically design policy now 
there are multiple possibilities and multiple trajectories that can take place. One, uh, you could have, as you pointed out, the demand for lifting the 50% cap, which has already, in practice, has already gone out. Uh, you know, 22% uh, uh, SCST, 27% OBC, 10% EB, EWS. So that 50% in practice is not there. You could also see demand for uh, sort of like private sector uh, uh, reservations. But think like why these demands are being raised. And these demands are being raised because uh, a large section of Indian society, which is SCST, OBC, does not feel that it is being represented. Yes, it can uh, uh, sort of like create more problems, uh, but you know any new sort of like radical policy change when you are trying to bring can always create problems. Okay. But are you not going to do those changes because you fear of those uh, 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 sort of like things in future? Guru Prakash Paswan, you didn't answer the question. You you criticized Rahul Gandhi and the Congress's opportunism, their past comments historically, but do you concede in the context of contemporary politics, this is now proving to be a political hot potato for the BJP. You, you, you're finding it difficult to try and gauge and determine how to oppose this without being able to oppose this publicly. No, no, Rahul, uh, that's not the question, absolutely. And uh, in my personal view, I'm of the firm opinion that caste has always been a political hot potato because the question of representation, the question of opportunities have always been in our society. I remember Bharat Ratna Karpuri Thakurji, he comes from Nai community. When he became uh, the chief minister, a Nara was given in Bihar. Since he comes from the Nai community, the Nara was Karpuri, Karpura, Chhod Kursi, Pakad Astura. So we are not denying the element of social inequality is still there. But the point is not that. Even today, the prime minister has to suffer that you are down to the bottom. So the point is not that. Even the Rashtrapati is being referred to a uh, devilish uh, mindset. Uh, on her skin tone, there have been multiple uh, comments made. But the point is this, that there is social inequality. We admit it. What Mr. Yogendra Yadav said or what Mr. Sanjay Jha said is not a discovery. We are aware of the fact that there are caste-based inequalities in India. But the point is, which you said in your opening remarks, is the question of hypocrisy. I have a book in my hand, Rahul, where it has been categorically said. Babu Jagjivan Ram, the tallest Dalit leader after Baba Sahib Ambedkar, he said it after a lot of pain and agony. He said that a Chamar can never become the prime minister of this country. And Indra Gandhi, he said this because Indra Gandhi said ki Jagjivan Ram Pradhan Mantri nahi banne chahiye, wo jeevan bhar chhodenge nahi. So the point is this, the hypocrisy... Okay, Sanjay Jha, 20 seconds. Rahul, the you know, you said that in Karnataka, in the caste Arraul census should be implemented. Rahul, 10 seconds. Okay, 10 seconds. I'm out of time, sir. Look, Rahul Ji, 2010 group of ministers under the leadership of Pranam Mukherjee. Why did they not release the data, I want to ask you? It was 2010. Yeah, the problem in this debate house. is everyone Teacher is citing the, the other's the hypocrisy and not simple. answering for their own. Sanjay Jha, yeah. you know, can somebody who comes, he, he calls I mean, himself what? a Dattatraya Brahman. Uh, most people who voiced... Uh, the demand for caste census actually come from backward caste. Now we've got a situation where somebody who comes from a forward caste is trying to become the voice of the dispossessed, the backwards. Can this succeed politically? Forget the philosophy. Can this succeed politically? Absolutely. You know, Rahul, what I'm convinced of, when people from the forward class, Rahul, Rahul Gandhi, forward caste, when, when I think many people, including me, when we bat for the backward caste, that's when change happens. Otherwise, people see it from a prism of politics. My one, give me 10 seconds and I will wrap up, Rahul. The BJP is looking at the caste census from the point of view of a defeat of their Hindutva campaign. That's the reason why they have always opposed the Mandal Commission. Okay. And the second point, the real story of India is economic and social empowerment. And no political party can now ignore it, which is why you are absolutely right. This is a hot political political potato, if you can call it. But the BJP cannot anymore dodge the reality of well, India's inequality, you know, poverty and backwardness. Rahul Gandhi can walk the talk by getting Chief Minister Siddharamaya to implement the caste census sure, in Karnataka. That. Let that be the starting point. Only then that. can anyone say you. that this isn't opportunism. And then we'll take it from there in terms of how genuine this is and how much of this is opportunism. But this is what politics is about. Rahul Gandhi is latched onto an idea that he thinks can help him 
You know, this is the real chakra view that's there. The Hindutva chakra view that the BJP has built, which is a solid chakra view, and he thinks this is how he can go in and permeate that chakra view. And this is really down to political battlefield tactics and maneuvering, and we will track what happens. Guru Prakash Paswan, Rahul Verma, Sanjay Jha for joining me on the news track. Thank you very much. Big story in the capital at this moment, not the politics, rather the waterlogging. Apparently, it's raining massively outside. We've been in the studios, but Arvind Oja, uh, our crime reporter, is amongst those tracking uh, the waterlogging. Arvind, we are in the studio and we are all normal here, but the reports are coming from the reports, they are telling that there is a lot of rain and a lot of waterlogging. What are your reports? 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 As you can see there in those images, it's terribly waterlogged and uh, it's probably going to get worse from what the med department is saying. So if you're anywhere in the capital traveling back home like I will be later, you need to be very, very careful. In fact, I have a lot of messages from family and please call before you leave the studio as all the roads are waterlogged. So be careful as will I.